my favorite part. What I want to break down for you guys is a video that I saw for the very first time yesterday. Uh, I've been doing some research because I'm teaching under the bridge. So I wanted to look up some live footage of them and make sure I was playing all the parts right. Really watch John's hands to make sure. But in doing so, I came across this one version of it where it seemed just like a complete train wreck. You know, I remember the SNL version way back in the day. I saw it in 1992. And I remember that being weird, too. There was just something off about the group. There was some tension on the stage. The music was off. Uh, and so when I played this one, I was surprised to find out that it was actually a little bit worse. Now, this video is not to disparage the band. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. And John Frusciante is one of my favorite guitar players. But he was going through a lot back then, I know. He was just wanted to get out of the band. And he actually ended up quitting May of that year. So this is kind of the end of that era as far as him being in the band until he rejoined many years later. Later, and then quit again and then rejoined again. So I thought as an experienced live musician, you know, I've played so many shows in my life that I've had so many crazy situations and I can kind of empathize with some of what I saw in this video. You know, the tensions between band members, some people being chemically impaired to the point where they can hardly play certain parts and just the awkwardness of having a not so great performance so let's get started i'll just kind of tell you my thoughts as we go through the video but just keep in mind i'm going to be commenting and stopping the video every now and again i know that could be a little bit annoying so this is under the bridge live at canal studios in france in 1992. <laughs> Right here, I think Anthony Kiedis is always a little bit tentative, like, oh, how's this going to go, man? I love the cigarette. People used to do that all the time. They would put it right under the string right behind the nut here. And uh, who, who's the first one I ever saw do that? Maybe Slash or something, but it's kind of a rock star move. So John's already kind of improvising. You could tell he's being sort of loose with it. And he's also playing it a lot slower than the actual album. So he's playing it about 8 to 10 beats per minute too slow here. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Do you guys hear that weird static? What I think is happening is the guitar frequencies are making Chad's snare on his snare drum ra uh, rattle like that. Lonely as I am, together we cry. Okay, I know where I saw the cigarette thing first. Eddie Van Halen, duh. God, this feels so slow. I wonder if right here, Anthony Kiedis is like, Flea, can you just come in early? You know, just because it's so slow and John is kind of going all over the place. There's really not a real strong foundation to sing over. But if Flea would just come in and play some root notes, I think that could have helped. But she knows who I, am. She I love that little guitar lick that he just did there. It sounds really cool. Uh, I paused it. L look at the look on Chad's face. There's going to be a couple times in this video where I showcase his reactions and it's pretty priceless. So right here, Chad looks a little bit, uh, I don't know, skeptical. Let's just put it that way. Okay, you might notice something here. Well, I don't need Can you hear that? Something's not quite right. What I figured out happened is John is actually out of tune. He's in tune with himself, but everything is up almost a quarter of a step. Just enough to make everything sound strange when Flea comes in. Because they're going to be clashing now just because they're a little bit out of tune with each other. Okay, this has to be tough on Anthony Kiedis because he's following the guitar in the beginning and all of a sudden the bass guitar comes in and it's a little bit different tuning and he has to sort of figure out how to sing over the, both of them. So he's kind of splitting the difference a little bit here and there so it sounds a little bit off and he's holding out a few of the notes. Alright, things are starting to fall off a little bit. The wheels are coming off. Now right there... At least John played the right part, even though he's kind of messing up a little bit. In the SNL version, he actually kicked into the end part, this part. He started to do that, but then caught himself and he fixed it. So at least he didn't do that. Check out Chad Smith's face here. Yikes. You never want to get that look from your drummer. Funny, that's supposed to be a really pretty E major 7 chord. 
But John is a little bit out of tune, like I said, but he hits it really hard, like <laughs> crank it. I just okay. I thought I just blew up my computer. But I don't ever want to be like I did that day. But take me to the place. Is it just me, or is when Chad came in with that fill, bow, 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 boom, it's almost like you could feel him expelling the anger that he was holding inside. I'm just speculating. This part, once again, is better than another version that I saw. They did a second take of this. And uh, in that one, John Frusciante is in tune. But as soon as the heavy part kicks in, it's supposed to be pretty big at sounding right here. Instead, John plays this weird little melody in the back and then just starts to do a guitar solo. Pretty weird, huh? Okay, a few things. So John missed the transitional chord. He's supposed to go up. He did eventually hit it. He was just a little bit late with it. So sometimes when it comes to the big changes in the song, he'll miss it just by a few milliseconds, but it's enough to notice it. And then Anthony Kiedis just starts headbanging really hard. Like I said before, I wonder if he's expelling some of that energy, you know? He headbangs all the time anyway, but I wonder if it's just a little more cathartic in this case. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Okay, so in multiple versions of this, uh, especially the SNL version, and this one, John just goes out of his way to just do the craziest thing for the backup vocals. So in this one, he just, you know, does some crazy call out. I don't know what it is, some kind of animal call or something. And on the SNL version, he just goes into this crazy falsetto wail of some kind. <laughs> And now it's not till the third time he does the backup part that he actually does it seriously. See, at least there he kind of sounded serious, like he was trying to sing the backup. It's a lot like when I saw the 1991 footage and John was being a lot more serious. So that's how it should sound, I guess, uh, instead of this free form acid jazz version he's doing. But let's keep going. You really learn how great Chad Smith is as a drummer. I mean, through all this, you know, playing really slow, he eventually brought the tempo up to the correct tempo. He's just rock solid the entire way through. You know, even though he's emotional, most likely, kind of pissed off, it's easy to speed up when you get mad, but he's holding it together. He's just hitting harder, I think. Where I stay. John right now is just in total improv mode. I wonder if Chad Smith ever wanted to put like pictures of John's face on the toms so he could just smack him. No, I'm just kidding. Ooh, Anthony looked like he walked off stage. He didn't though. He's just kind of like walking it off. Like you want to fight somebody? No, I'm not going to fight. You just kind of walk it off. I really love how the crowd doesn't really know what to do. It's kind of an awkward cheer, like, uh. You could really hear the difference in the tuning right now, just when it's those two playing like this. Look at how Anthony Kiedis is just staring at John. Still staring. Look at that. I wonder what's going through his head right there. Flea's like, no, don't do it, man. It's not worth it. Yeah. 
at the end, uh, Kiedis is like looking out like, are we done or what? And I'm sure he just walked off stage right there. So yeah, as fun as that is to look back on now, because everything's okay now, uh, to look back and just see how tense and crazy things were. There are videos of my band where I knew the state of mind that we were in. And uh, there are a few shows where we're, we weren't getting along the best. And there was even one where we kind of had an explosion at the end of the show. Our drummer was yelling at our singer. <laughs> Get the fucking camera out of here. Audience cam. I'm serious. Gotta talk. Let's go, guys. This is excellent footage. So that was a lot of fun to do. Let me know in the comment section if you ever saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers back in the day, you know, back in the early 90s. I never got to see them live. That's really a big regret I have. I don't think it's too late. Hopefully they're still going to play for many years and I could check them out live, but it would have been a trip to see them back then. I think I would have rather have seen them in 91 because they were just firing on all cylinders at the time. But when things fall apart to this level, it just becomes kind of sad. You sort of leave with a bad feeling in your stomach, you know, when you see a show like that. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, that should be the end of my under the bridge phase right now. I'm still putting up lessons on my website, but as far as YouTube goes, I think I'm good for a while on the under the bridge content but uh thank you for watching it was a lot of fun to do this we'll catch you at the next video thank you bye bye